Hi, I'm Brian Green, and welcome to the elegant fabric of the universal cosmos. Today, I'm here to talk to you about string theory. What is string theory? Well, string theory is something that attempts to unite general relativity with quantum mechanics. These are two ideas in physics that are at odds with each other. If someone could unite them, all the laws of physics, everything in the universe, could be described by one set of laws, one equation that would describe everything. Now, why are these two theories at odds? It's because at the quantum level, the very, very small, subatomic, the theories of general relativity don't work. You see, at this realm, everything is so turbulent, it's all up to chance, and relativity can't really predict anything that happens. The smooth dimension of space that we usually see becomes jittery, like this. To get rid of the need to explain these jitters, scientists today have proposed the string theory. Strings are little filaments of energy, little strings that vibrate. They're smaller than anything you can think of, smaller than an atom or an electron or a quark. And the way that they vibrate determine the, bar the particles that it makes up. So, how did string theory come about? Gabriel Veneziano, working at CERN in 1968, was researching the strong nuclear force in atoms when he noticed that the data could be described by Leonard Euler's beta function, discovered 200 years beforehand. <gasps> the famous Swiss mathematician had discovered the equation for mathematical purposes only, and Veneziano did not know how or why it worked for his data. This problem was apparently solved by three physicists, Leonard Susskind, Holger Nielsen, and Yuchiro Nambu, who all showed that if a string of energy were to connect the protons and the neutrons, the equations would work. To those involved with this research, it was gratifying to understand the physical origin of Veneziano's insight, since it suggested that physicists were on their way to unmasking the strong nuclear force. Yet, the discovery was not greeted with universal enthusiasm. Far from it. Very far. In fact, Susskind's paper was returned by the journal to which he submitted it, with the comment that the work was of minimal interest an evaluation Susskind recalls quite well. I was stunned. I, I was knocked off my chair. I was depressed. So I went home and well, got drunk. Eventually, Susskind did get his paper published, and so did the other physicists that were working on the string concept. However, no sooner had that happened that the string theory ran into two major setbacks. The first was that data gathered in the early 1970s could not be described by the strings. The second was that a second approach, quantum chromodynamics, which used all the old concepts of particles and fields, could accurately describe it. It seemed by 1974 that string theory was dead. John Schwartz was not able to give up the string theory. Working with particle accelerators in 1974, he couldn't get his mind off the fact that the equations predicted a rogue particle being emitted from the collisions. Now this particle would have a mass of zero and a spin twice that of the photon. Using this within string theory, this little string would connect general relativity with quantum mechanics. How? Well, that means a little more background. You see, this string vibrates in such a pattern that has all the properties of a graviton. So that string theory includes the gravitational force. Thus, string theory can account for messenger particles like gravitons and photons just as it accounts for matter particles. This means that it has entered the realm of quantum jitters. As you may recall from earlier in the documentary, quantum jitters are the minuscule bumps in space-time that cause the gap between general relativity and quantum mechanics. However, this gap is only noticeable at scales smaller than the Planck length because quantum jitters are insignificantly small in comparison to the Planck length. Strings, and hence all particles, including the graviton, are at least as big as the Planck length. Therefore, we can ignore quantum jitters, and they no longer have as much importance. This tiny string could explain not the strong nuclear force, but actually the force of gravity. It would represent what is called the graviton, which would unite general relativity with quantum mechanics. String theory still wasn't getting much attention. Although scientists knew that unification had to be solved at some point in the future, they were doing just fine with the discoveries they were making about the physical world without string theory. Also, Schwartz noticed anomalies in string theory, where, in certain places, the laws of physics broke down 
they didn't apply. Schwartz teamed up with Michael Green of Queen Mary College in London to try to work out these mathematical inconsistencies. He was hoping that the anomalies would cancel each other out. Miraculously, on a stormy, dark night in 1984 at the Aspen Center for Physics in Colorado, Green and Schwartz discovered that the anomalies did cancel out. String theory was finally free of mathematical inconsistencies. This time, the world paid attention. Don't stop, make it pop, DJ, blow my speakers up tonight. I'm going fight till we see the sunlight. Tick-tock on the clock, but the party don't stop, no. Now, the only issue with string theory is that we can't prove it. The strings are so small that there's no way to measure it with our technology right now. But right now I'm going to go over a couple things that would happen if string theory were true. You see, it would predict 10 dimensions of space. If the string was wiggling at the, at the velocity that is predicted, it would have the tension of about a trillion times more than piano strings. However, with the nine dimensions of space and one of time, it gets rid of all this tension and complies with E equals MC squared. If string theory were proven, then we could also trace the origins of the Big Bang. See, the theory is that we can only see three dimensions because only the three of the dimensions expanded during the Big Bang. If we can prove string theory, we can trace back to when all the dimensions were too small, the small ones that we can't even see today. And we would be able to describe that and completely unify physics. Modern science would be blown out of the water. <laughs> Don't stop, make it 